Hey guys, this is John Zombro, and I'm here with The Lifetime Body in episode number four of Ask Jay-Z. Recently I posted a video entitled All About Exercise, and I'm quite pleased to have received a number of questions about this fascinating topic. I think we would all agree that exercise has a great value for our health and for our fitness, but it can be a very challenging subject to clearly define and to understand. The questions that I received were fairly consistent in a couple areas. Viewers wanted to know a few more details about the Lifetime Body Exercise System, such as how it came to be, why it is unique, and how it can be adapted for each person. So as it is said, ask and you shall receive. I developed this system as a means of helping my clients to gain an understanding of the different classifications of exercise and to get the most benefit from the least amount of training. This system is a product of my working with thousands of clients for over three decades in coaching, training, and therapeutic capacities. It is also a distillation of hundreds of studies published in peer-reviewed publications and is extensively evidence-based. And finally, it's not a one-size-fits-all approach to exercise, but a common-sense way to practically apply the various methods that have proven to be effective in real-world applications. We've previously reviewed how any time a human moves, we call that movement, and then under the umbrella of movement, we separate out general daily activity from exercise. We view exercise as sort of that official, purposeful type of movement that targets and achieves very specific outcomes in function and performance capacity. We usually dress out for exercise and we differentiate it from more casual forms of movement. The different types of exercise are isolated into five distinct categories, each with its own unique set of requirements and contributions to our conditioning. Here's where things get interesting. I looked at what the literature supports in terms of how to do each type of training and also how much to do to reach a critical threshold level. In other words, this system identifies the duration, the intensity, and the frequency that hits the scientifically justified sweet spot or Goldilocks zone in terms of cost and benefit. Doing less than the prescribed amounts in the lifetime body exercise system doesn't quite get you all the benefits that our levels provide. And conversely, doing much more than those recommendations doesn't get you much of additional benefit and even comes with some risks. Now, I know that some of you might be a little confused by all the things you read in the popular press or even in current research. The challenge there is that most of that information is reporting on only one particular kind of exercise, often in relationship to one protocol and its effect on one variable. An example would be looking at a very brief high intensity interval training workout on a stationary bike and its effect on insulin resistance. That's valuable data for sure, but it represents only one very narrow perspective on training. Another thing that confuses many exercise advice consumers is when intensity is not clearly defined in a study or a recommendation, such as saying that you should get somewhere between 150 and 180 minutes of exercise per week, with some of it being moderately vigorous. And the amount known as sum is not quantified, nor is the term moderately vigorous given an output parameter, such as percentage of maximum heart rate or another descriptor. I realize just how confusing and frustrating that can be for anyone trying to make sense of it all. That's why I did the work for you. The lifetime body exercise system is sort of like a meta-analysis of all the meta-analyses of exercise studies, and it's assembled in a, in a proprietary fashion that is easy to follow and understand. But here's the kicker. The system is just a guideline and a starting point from which anyone can take it wherever they want. Sometimes a beginner may need to reduce the frequency, volume, and intensity of some of the training, or an athlete may want to really bias one or two areas as they relate most specifically to her sport of choice. Highly fit individuals can tolerate and absorb, and probably should in many cases, do substantially more than the requisite amounts. That's why they are laid out as the minimum effective dosages. Sometimes we recognize that exercisers with high fitness and athletic goals may want to at least temporarily consume their training at what are their personal maximum absorbable dosages. Sometimes a person will say, I play a sport, or I regularly attend a fitness class, or something along those lines. They'll often ask, is that good enough? Or am I getting all of my fitness bases covered with this approach? And in many cases, the answer is probably yes. Not only because many good programs do a fairly good job of addressing all the exercise categories, but also for this reason. Movement, and especially the exercise component of it, needs to be fun. It has to incorporate play. And that's one of my primary requirements for training programs, is that we have fun. There should always be joyous celebration in our exercise. Next, there's quite a bit of crossover between those categories, depending upon how we apply them. 
In the scenario I presented in the All About Exercise video, I offered up only one model of four weekly workouts that accomplish the objectives, but this can certainly be done in thousands of ways. While all five of those components may seem very sciencey, they really are just the natural exercises of our ancestral patterns, for which we are genetically wired, broken out into modern terms. Simply following your natural animal training instincts, if you can tune into them, will cover all the same bases. That's the next primary requirement of a training program, that it gets results. Doesn't matter how you do it, just matters that you do it. My third and final requirement with all training or exercise programming is that we avoid injury. This seems so obvious, but not getting hurt is critical in training, and that is one of the benefits of a well-designed program. In the way we incorporate all the types of training in our lifetime body workouts, appropriately utilize warm-up, and always emphasize proper technique, we significantly reduce the risk of injury. This is one of my concerns with many protocols that use ballistic movement, heavy lifts, high intensity intervals, or sprinting. Sometimes an article will espouse the benefits of such exercise, and there are many, but the inexperienced exerciser will sometimes jump into these advanced methods too rapidly without proper warm-up and instruction and end up getting hurt, which quickly, which quickly leads to burnout, dropout, and, inability, and an inability to train for health and fitness. So ironic. Same goes for classes or sports programs. Most of these are well designed and have good leadership, but we always want to make sure the fit is right for each of us so that we don't get hurt. So that's a little more about the lifetime body exercise system. It's really an interpretation of the kinds of exercise you are genetically designed to perform in the dosages that research indicates will help you to look, feel, and perform your best over the longest possible lifespan. As you can see, I love sharing this kind of information, so please leave me a question or comment below. And if you're loving this stuff also, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I have tons more great videos coming your way. Until next time, this is Coach Jay-Z saying thanks so much for watching and signing off from the Lifetime Body, where science meets common sense and where you can make your body last a lifetime.